today we're going to have an amazing show. We're going to be talking about mindset. I am so happy to have all of you here with us. And please help me welcome our gracious host, Robbie Stoll. Hello and welcome, everybody. So great to have you here, as Patricia said, said our wonderful, beloved VIP family members, and of course, our Full Body Fix or audience members as well that follow along with us and stay connected through email and other sources as well. It's wonderful to have all of you here. And before we even get started, I want to prepare you for one thing very simple that you'll need for this meeting, but I'm going to tell you up front so you're not scrambling when we're actually going to need this item. And that is a sheet of paper. So like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, something like this would be ideal. Okay. Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and a writing utensil, either a pen, pencil, whatever, something that's going to work. So go ahead and grab that now. If you don't already have that, grab an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and a writing utensil. Please go ahead and do that now as we get started. You will need that in a few minutes to do a really cool and forward moving exercise that we're going to be doing in this session. So again, uh, one more time, please get a piece of paper and a writing utensil. Uh, bigger the sheet of paper, the better. Uh, we're going to be taking some really cool notes on some things from your mindset. Okay. So <clears throat> with that being said, regarding mindset, uh, we've done literally basically research on thousands of individuals over the age of 50 with all the individuals we've worked with and watched their physical and mental emotional progress through our systems. We've had a lot of interactions and it's been really interesting to watch and see uh, who succeeds the most and who who literally kind of overcomes aging, right? And, and meaning they don't just arrive in their 70s or 80s or 90s. They arrive there and basically a fully functioning body. And even if they have limitations, they find ways to overcome. They find ways to keep pushing forward. And they have a functioning, thriving zest for life. And there's one thing that stands out to me more than anything else. And that is they have an ageless mindset. And by an ageless mindset, here, here's how I would define that. They don't they don't just uh, they don't embrace age as an excuse. They embrace age as a reason to get going, right? And of course, aging comes with uh, some difficulties for sure. But regardless, they don't use it as an excuse. They use it as a reason to overcome more, do more, be more, and embrace more challenges. And so, they embrace aging as a challenge. And just like everything else in life, they embrace challenges. They don't just run from them and they don't aggressively pursue comfort. So one of the thing, big things I've noticed is of those individuals who end up having more physical issues, often have more mental, emotional issues, or they really need some added bonus uh, or push or the right support system or structure or people who really do care about them and give them the right mental, emotional wherewithal to overcome, I would say, one of the most difficult thing. And that is the physical things that happen in life in the second half of life and, and overcoming that. So, you know, that's one of the, that's what we do in our VIP training system. We embrace our VIPs with a youthful team spirit of love, care, connection to help them build and maintain the very best they can be in the safest, healthiest way possible. So none of this is, am I saying, oh, you should be aggressive or do things that are going to like hurt you. Uh, I would strongly advise you against that and make intelligent actions in overcoming. But whether you already have an ageless mindset uh, and you want to optimize it even more, or you'd like to have more of, or just some of an ageless mindset, I'm going to help you take that journey today. Uh, and one of the things that I think is difficult about mindset is it's really difficult for us to like think about like what is it that's really controlling our pathways and overcoming and our mindset because you know I know you like myself being a human 
um, our intention is one thing. And just because our intention is this, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. We end up um, not following through with what we really want to achieve, or it feels much harder than it should be. And a lot of that is because of our subconscious mind, our emotional mind, everything that's going on below the surface. So today I want you, I want to help you give you a way to kind of take off the um, veil, so to speak, and really see your emotional mind. Uh, we're going to focus around exercise in this session, but this um, strategy or workshop that I'm going to present to you and the way that we're going to analyze your mindset can be used for anything. We're going to approach it on exercise. But uh, let me share this image with you one second, and then I'm going to share more. One second here. So what you're looking at on the screen is an iceberg, of course. And why are we looking at an iceberg? Because this is very synonymous, and you may have seen something like this before. And if so, great. Uh, but here's how we're going to use that. So what drives your actions um, that become behaviors and then habits are really the, this is only the tip of the iceberg. So when you look at the tip of the iceberg, this is like your actions, your behaviors, and your habits, okay? So if you would with me, metaphorically here, below the surface is really where our thoughts, which combine with emotions, are. And our thoughts, which combine with emotions, are really what determines what actions we're going to take. And what happens is, is our thoughts and our emotions determine our actions. And so basically our subconscious mind really decides pretty much everything. And then our conscious mind comes up with reasons that sound good to us. And depending on the situation can sound good to others for you to be taking those actions, right? And that's pretty much the way that we live our life. Uh, and if we really look at our subconscious, then we're able to better determine well, what is really steering the ship and how to get the best results? So what drives those actions that become behaviors and habits are therefore uh, your results, right? So thoughts connected with the energy of emotions, emotions drive actions, which you see in the outer world. So this is what actually shows up in the results you get in the outer world. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Before you arrive with actions, you've got all this going on under the surface. So you have 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day that make up your thinking inventory. And these thoughts can be in support of or in conflict with your greatest intentions without you even being consciously aware. Now, then these thoughts get coupled with emotions about how you feel or how you energetically connect with that thought. So emotions become energy, and then those energies drive your actions and basically your life. So how you attach your thoughts with emotions determine how you feel, which is like the energy force field around your thoughts. And that energy force field determines your alignment for achieving within your intention. Your thoughts and emotions around the actions required to achieve an outcome sets your alignment for how effectively you achieve that outcome. So let me say that again. Your thoughts and emotions around the actions required to achieve an outcome sets your alignment for how effectively you achieve that outcome, right? So it is so important, and we are going to be getting into an exercise soon here, uh, which VIPs, uh, some experienced VIPs have done before. <laughs> But your ex external life is a reflection of your internal life. Said differently, your outside reality is a reflection of your mental dialogue. So although with an inventory of 2,500 thoughts per hour, how could you possibly keep track of your mental dialogue, let alone change it to align with your greatest intentions, such as exercising and eating healthier or you know, living the best quality of life possible? Well, you can do this microscopically by analyzing your emotions within the respective categories that drive your actions and therefore behaviors and habits. Once you can see this clearly, then you can dissect and work on your mental dialogue that determines your outcomes. 
So you can use what I'm going to teach you next for any area of your life, but let's use a common theme we can all connect on, and that is exercise. Now let me do this mental jujitsu again and bring the slides back up on the screen here. And we'll continue. Give me just a second again here. Apologize, folks. We are seeing your your screen, Rob. And now? Now we're not. Okay. We're just, just one second here. Who thinks Rob is in charge of the tech, the, the partner, <laughs> the fitness doctor? <laughs> <laughs> That would definitely not be me, no. <laughs> okay, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at your mental dialogue inventory for exercising, all right? And I promise you this will get smoother. So first... Um, well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your piece of paper and I want you to write on that. You're basically going to create exactly what you see on the screen. I want you to write on the top and kind of small um, so that you have lots of room below. Just write on the top how I emotionally relate to exercise. So on the very top of the paper, kind of centered, write how I emotionally relate to exercise. And then you're just going to create a line through the center, vertical line through the center of the page, and then a center line through horizontally through the page, right? So because basically what I'm asking you to do is create a line, one line here, you can see my cursor, one line here and one line across. So we end up having four boxes. On the top left, you're gonna write pain, of not exercising. On the bottom left of box, right? Because you created four equal size boxes. You're going to write pleasure of exercising. On the top right box, you're going to write pain of exercising. And on the bottom right box, you're going to write pleasure of not exercising. So again, you're going to basically create exactly what you see on the screen. No need to dry, draw all the lines. All you need is one line through the center, vertical, one line through the center, horizontal. And once again, to repeat, just for clarity for everyone, pain of not exercising, top left box, bottom left box, pleasure of exercising, top right box, pain of exercising, Bottom right box, pleasure of not exercising. And once you've done that, we are going to be starting an exercise. And so here's some um, coaching points for you on this exercise. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at your emotions around this and don't start filling out the boxes yet. I'm going to give you a specific time. I'm going to give you two minutes for two minutes for each area. So uh, what we're looking for is in, 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 there's no, you're not turning this assignment in. There's no right or wrong. And the more honest and accurate you are, um, the better results you're going to get for yourself. Okay. So I will later in this session, I'm going to be asking for those who want to, um, <laughs> Uh, volunteer and share some things, but no one's going to be called on. Okay. So remember, these are your emotions, your feelings for each item below. Don't overthink and do let it yourself explore your creative mind on all aspects of how you feel about exercise. What comes up does not need to make sense as often. Emotions are irrational, but still this is the energy force field in action. Pay special attention to thoughts or feelings that come up, which have often come up. So like pain of not exercising, which we're going to get to first. 
um, which is the top left. Um, the first thing I want you to think about here is think about exercising and how you feel about not following through with this action. Are there any negative feelings you have when thinking about not falling through on or skipping exercise, right? All of these thoughts under pain of not exercising. And Patricia is going to start a two minute timer now. So we're going to go two minutes on each one of these boxes. So please don't jump ahead. And if you don't have anything in a box, don't worry. That's that's part of it. You're going to have way more in certain areas than others. You'll you'll understand what all of this means when we're done. So top left box, I'll repeat one more time, and then I'll be quiet. Think about exercising and how you feel about not following through with this action. Are there any negative feelings you have when thinking about not following through on or skipping exercise? Write all of these thoughts in this pain of not exercising. Awesome. Okay. So now next we're going to go directly into your bottom left box and we're going to spend two minutes there. Remember your emotions, how you feel, not every box is going to be totally full. Okay. So now bottom left box, pleasure of exercising. Think about exercising and how you feel about the action of exercise. Are there any positive feelings that come to your mind when you think about exercising? Write all of these thoughts under pleasure of exercising. Thank you, Patricia. One more time. Bottom left box, pleasure of exercising. Think about exercising and how you feel about the action of exercise. Are there any positive feelings that come to your mind when thinking about exercising? Write all of these thoughts under pleasure of exercising.
You are muted. Haha, I'm getting much better at the technical screen share here. Okay, so but now top right box, pain of exercising. Top right box, pain of exercising. And here's what I want you to do here. In this box, think about any, or think about exercising and how you feel about the action of exercise. Are there any negative, negative feelings that come to your mind when thinking about exercising? Right. All of these thoughts under pain of exercising. And again, it's not things that you can think of. It's things that you actually feel and actually come up to your in your mind when you're thinking about that action. Right. It's it's for you. It's not this is for you. Right. OK, so go ahead and write those things in this box. Okay, and for the final box of four, bottom right, pleasure of not exercising. Pleasure of not exercising. Think about exercising and how you feel about not falling through on or skipping exercise. Are there any positive feelings that come to your mind when thinking about not falling through on exercise? Write all of these thoughts under pleasure of not exercising. And again, remember, some boxes are going to have more than others.
Okay. So the last step here is I want you to now write above the left column, right? The left column is the one where you have the box, pain of not exercising, pleasure of exercising, right? Moving towards. So on the top of this column, just somewhere, just write moving towards so it can signify that these are the things that move you towards taking this action. Then on the right side, on the red column where it's pain of exercising pleasure of not exercising on that column just like you see on the screen right moving away from okay so put moving towards on the left column top top of right column put moving away from and congratulations you've just completed a few first huge step of the 99 percent of becoming and staying fit um, understanding this can be utilized to optimize any area of your life, by the way, you can use this for like anything, um, to really get what is your mental dialogue of inventory, right? What is the inventory going on in your head that is controlling your actions? You can use this for anything by analyzing and dissecting those different areas. Um, you know, pain and pleasure, uh, I'm sure you've heard it said that pain move. we move away from pain and towards pleasure, right? You've learned that a long, long time ago, but it's actually much more complex than that. It looks more like this. So your mental dialogue uh, moving uh, inventory for moving towards an action has both um, pain or negative emotion that you feel can be avoided by falling through with this action and pleasurable positive emotion gained by taking this action. Right. And then in the moving away from column and action, uh, you see that in action, uh, you have pain of doing this action. Uh, and that's the negative or pleasure and positive emotion by skipping it. So, you know, it should be obvious to you that if you have more on this side, you're likely an individual that really follows through with exercise and you don't have any issues. And if you're an individual that kind of really has an issue falling through with exercise, you probably, there's probably a lot of pains associated with it. You probably even come up with pleasures or, or the other thing that can happen, even if the list isn't necessarily longer, there's stronger emotional consequences that are involved with some of your list items, right? So for example, um, someone who had like a really close brother that died of heart disease and he could have totally prevented it if he would have kept himself more fit. That would be really a, a pain. You think of that brother and that they passed and that might be one item, right? So that's, that's going to really move you forward. Okay. So, uh, you know, so then if we go back and we look at um, the mental dialogue now that you've completed your own mental dialogue inventory, you can see the actual thoughts and feelings out of those 60 to 80,000 per day, which are specifically focused on exercise. You, you now have conscious awareness of those thoughts and emotion force fields that control your decision making uh, to exercise or not. So how strong are your emotions and what is the length of list on the moving towards side for you versus the moving away from side? If you're moving away from side, of course, as I said, it has far greater than 50% of the size uh, and emotional strength as compared to the moving towards side, then the chances are this is going to be pushing you towards the uh, kind of like as in bowling, it'd be pushing you towards the gutter, right? You're not going to be knocking down any uh, fitness pins at all. So though, although with your mental fitness, as is also true with your physical fitness, you're never really done. It does get much easier to stay fit once you become fit, but it's a lifelong journey that comes down to the 99% objective of personally shaping your own mental dialogue so that fitness actions happen with ease and really become part of your life. You are aligned with, attracted to, and even fall in love with the process and its effects of fitness. So I do want to congratulate you for completing this. That is really awesome. And now what I want to do is go into just a few steps um, that I want to share with you that I feel are really helpful for, um, for making even better usage of this. And then we're going to open up to a nice organic conversation. VIPs, my most courageous ones, please get ready. 
I want to especially connect with you. So get ready to raise your hands and share with me my courageous VIPs uh, on your list and share with me and let's have a wonderful conversation and get others um, the energy and emotions that help build the highest quality, most functioning, thriving quality of life. Okay. So here's my tips for you on optimizing this. Um, first, becoming super aware of our pain and pleasure attached to this area of our life is the first step. And you've already completed that. So congratulations. You're already done with step one. Next, I want you to realize a cold, hard fact. And this is going to help you. Okay. But it is a cold, hard fact that none of us humans are escaping. And that is we all have inherited me included, we all have inherited gene predisposition to pathologies. And pathology, pathologies, I mean disease states of various types and forms can be mechanical, physiological, heart, cancer, like you, you name it, all the ugly stuff we don't want to happen to us in this lifetime. Our genes get drastically more sensitized for having disease states when we're physically inactive or we don't have enough physical activity. And here's the thing also I want you to know, you don't have to be a gym rat. You don't have to be Mr. or Miss Fitness to get amazingly incredible healthy results from fitness. You just have to be physically active on a daily basis, basically enjoying and doing the things that you enjoy doing in physical activity. Um, and if you do that, you're going to decrease, you're going to, if you don't do it, here's what's going to happen. So this is like the pain of not exercising. You're going to sensitize your genes so that your body's more likely to produce pathologies and disease states. It's, it's, I didn't come up with this. It's like proven research fact. Um, and then other things in our life that we're doing, whether stress or not eating right and stuff, it, it actually sensitizes the effects of those other things that we're that we're doing. OK, and the reverse is also true, though. So every time you exercise, your muscles literally send messages to all parts of your body to improve things like producing energy, killing cancer cells. So every time you do like a sustained format of exercise, you're actually your muscle cells literally secrete substances that go out and kill cancer cells every time. Uh, and you improve your sleep, you elevate your mood, you increase your brain power, you redevelop new neurons, you basically awaken and, and make all of your cells and your entire body thrive because of putting metabolic demand on your body from exercise. So, that's some fuel for the fire that could be mixed in this structure for you to like want to actually do that if if you're not there or to make you want to do it even more than you already do. Uh, so if there's anything from what I just shared with you that could emotionally attach to your moving towards side of your mental dialogue, add it to the appropriate section of your in inventory. You've likely heard the expression that what you think about is what you become, law of attraction. Uh, when that first came out, you know, I'm like, boy, I thought it was, I thought it was great. And I also thought it was like, you know what, you're not just going to start thinking about money or fitness and start having um, checks come to you and body fat falling off. It, it just doesn't work that way. Um, but what will happen is what you focus on here on the moving towards side and negating this and, you know, and actually I'm going to share a point on this next is um, when these thoughts come into your mind, it's okay. See them, accept them. The biggest thing that's negative, like, like those, for example, who have anxiety, uh, the biggest thing about anxiety, for example, is when you get anxiety and you connect with not feeling okay with the, with the sensations and stuff they're having in your body, that's actually what causes uh, anxiety and negative effects in your body to awaken even more because of the not okayness with it. When you see it, you accept it. And then you choose to change your mind and feel the other things, the gratitudes, the positives, the health you do have, and that type of thing. Well, that same thought process of putting your thoughts and energy around where you want your mind to focus in terms of pain of not taking a healthy action, uh, 
and pleasure of taking a healthy action will drastically get you to take many more healthy actions, which can produce the fitness or, you know, in the case of like money, when the first law of attraction came out, um, the, you remember the whole video series and all that stuff, uh, the book, uh, the power, um, the power I think it was called the power. So it, it can work. The secret. Thank you. The secret. Yeah. But through your emotions. Right. So so I, I would strongly encourage you to spend more time thinking about and literally, literally just spend the time in your head. <laughs> pretty simple on the thoughts that are over here. If you just do that and you try to find what emotions you can connect with, with the list over here, you will find going doing exercise drastically easier for you or anything that you want to use this mental dialogue uh, inventory for, right? It can be used again for anything in your life. Um, and so the best thing is, is finding positive, healthy things, healthy actions you want to take and then structure them in to this sequence as you've done here. And I encourage you to revisit your mental dialogue inventory as often as you like but at least once per week on any area that you feel is really important to you and you're really wanting to improve in your life. And as you practice this, uh, you'll find that in your own mind, you'll find new items to add to your moving towards list. And when new, my, new items for moving towards arise, write them down and make sure they get added to your inventory. And then when you revisit your mental dialogue inventory, you will see that Natural ease for taking action to exercise will be in direct proportion to the ratio of your moving towards list size and, and emotional strength as the ratio compared with the moving away from list. Make it a game, right? And that's always a way to kind of change things is make it a game to see over time how much you can make moving towards overcome the moving away from list if that's in, currently an issue and if it's not make the moving towards even more powerful remember this is for you your well-being and should feel fun encouraging and confidence building you know there are people who seem as though everything or many things seem to just come easy for them they're tranquil going through difficulties they seem to handle stress and achievements better um, sometimes better than you, you might feel, and they're in control of their behavior and adopt new good habits easier than others. Guys, it's simply just because of this format. They're Whether they realize it or not, they're using this format to connect, whether it's from childhood or upbringing or scenario or in the environment that they're in, they, they structure this and that's what leads them into actions and with ease. So this comes from being able to see exactly through and optimize their list. And so now that you've got the inside secrets to having a fit mind, enjoy the process of elevating your fitness game and knocking down more fitness pins, right? Because I look at this kind of like, uh, <clears throat> kind of like bowling, right? So in, in bowling, like have you, I'm sure you've all gone bowling before. So when you when you bowl, sometimes it seems like it's going to take forever for that ball to get there. At first, the ball is like going in a good trajectory. It's just like when you start off in a fitness plan or in any endeavor that you want to achieve in. At first, it feels great. And you got a lot of energy about it and you're going in the right. And somehow it starts to not exactly go the right direction as you get further and further down that lane. But if you have your emotions and your thoughts connected right before you let that ball go, the likelihood of you knocking down more pins and getting a score like as high as 300 in bowling or many pins is much more likely. Uh, and the other thing I would share with you is that the moment of conviction and that anything that you really want to find important to you in your life, um, at the moment of conviction, the universe will conspire to assist you. So um, with all that, now let's go into an organic conversation, which is my favorite part. So VIPs in this session that would like to raise their hand, raise anything that you rate and share with me anything you've learned about today's session, anything that you've learned through your training system that you want to share with others, that you want to connect with me on your list, that you want to talk about any items, please raise your hands. I would love to connect with you and, um, and have an awesome organic conversation. And we can get into discussions that are then going to help others because, you know, it's so great when we hear from others. One thing is to hear from me, 
But when we hear from others, you're able to gain um, connection and energy and emotion that's going to help your own actions. So hello and big welcome to you, Alice. Hi. Um, so yeah, I, um, I've done this before, of course, but um, it's good to do it again. And I, I did notice that my, surprisingly, my pleasure of exercising lot this was pretty long, but it's only because I do quite a bit of research about health. So I know that it's good for my health and my longevity and my brain and my circulation and burns calories and helps me be stronger. It's a good habit, blah, blah, blah. It improves my balance and improves my cardiovascular endurance. My mind is quiet while I do it. So these are all the pleasure of exercising. But man, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's hard. It takes time. It's uncomfortable. I don't like it. So, <clears throat> so that's just the truth. <laughs> and um, I'm really looking forward to when I get to the point where I actually like it, like what you said, that I gonna eventually I'm going to like it. And that's going to be a really good day <laughs> when that happens. Um, what do you what do you think about when you are exercising? That's what's really beautiful. My mind is quiet. Mm. My mind is just totally quiet, which it doesn't isn't usually. Usually it's going, you know, all the time. Um, wow. So you're probably in a, a flow state then. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. And it's interesting because I used to rationalize. I'm very physically active. I ha have a horse farm. And so I'm always doing stuff, cutting wood and taking care of, you know, a lot of things. And I used to rationalize, oh, I don't need to, I don't need to exercise. I'm, I get, I get enough exercise, you know, but I, I certainly recognize that I've been doing this with Robbie now for gosh, uh, this is my second year, I think, or maybe more than that. I'm not sure. But, um, and I totally recognize that I'm much stronger. I'm, you know, I, I, one of the places I notice it is when I feed my dog and I squat down to get the man, I just pop right back up, you know, before it might've been a little bit, you know, pushing myself up. And so it's definitely making a difference. And, <clears throat> You know, a lot of things that I've tried, you know, supplements and different things, because I'm, like I said, I'm very interested in health. I can't tell a difference. I, I and I rationalize that it's because I'm pretty good health. And so, but I can tell a difference with this. I can definitely tell a difference. So, yeah. So it's, I, I, yeah, I can re recommend it, even though I don't like doing it. <laughs> it's, well, it's interesting to me how your, your mind goes quiet and you're in like a, because, so part of like our mind going quiet, when we do activities where our mind goes quiet with the, we call it a, a flow state. And um, I I've have yet to learn how to pronounce his name. It's extremely difficult, but there's a psychologist from Czech Republic who actually pioneered the science of flow. It's, it's really, his first name is Mikhail. And it, yeah. it really is, it's a true science. We go into a flow state uh, we forget about time where mind goes quiet. We're totally focused on what we're doing. This is like a flow state. This is things we really enjoy. So it's interesting that you have a flow state, but yet you don't like it. So I'm wondering if there's some um, regressional thing from the past that made you kind of think that exercise shouldn't be fun. Or, you I'll, know. Tell you, I'll tell you the things that I had on my pain list. It's hard. It takes time. It's uncomfortable. There's so many other things I'd rather do, and I don't like it. <laughs> Those are my so <laughs> it was a lot shorter. It was a but lot it's short. Shorter. Yeah, it's but short. Like, but um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was on my list of the. But I totally recognize. I mean, if you do any research on health at all, it's great for everything regarding health, longevity, your brain, your vascular. I mean, every part of your body is benefited by exercise, and. As we get older, we we just have to do more to take care of ourselves than when we're, you know younger. You can get away with you know not doing stuff, but when you're older, you you if you're gonna stay healthy and live a long, ha happy, healthy life, you gotta do these things. You gotta start maintaining and taking care of yourself, and this is one of the best things you can do. Totally, yeah. So so can I, if I can give you advice for one thing, if you haven't yes. yet tried this. And that is, you know, you don't need to try to do it every session because then it can become arduous. But like, let's say like once a month, you pick a, a session and 
in that session and maybe it's a session you're already kind of adapted to and you know what's going on you're more comfortable with so like when we get into a new level and it's like one of the last sessions in the level is connect with your body in each motion and feel like breathe in how strong you are and how capable you are and how good you feel exercising and try to just tap into the emotions and the connection and and breathe that in and anything that comes to your mind that's potentially negative, do exhale, exhale those things and inhale the positive, like how grateful you are for your functionality, how grateful you are to move, how strong you feel if you're using your back muscles, how grateful you are for how strong your back muscles are, you know, how happy you are. And I, I don't do this every session. Um, but I definitely like at least once a month, I'll do a session that I call an interoceptive session. And I'll, I'll, I'm like, I don't care about the load or the weight or anything. I just care about mind connecting in the physical realm and conditioning those things in the body. So I think that that's one thing, especially for an advanced exercise that would be really effective, effective for you. If, if you do that and it would be effective for everyone, but especially, yeah. Yeah. And, and just to say uh, one thing that that's really great about your the way you teach is that you are constantly giving us, uh, you know, telling us all the different muscles that we need to be engaging. And so there's really not enough room in your brain yeah. to about anything else. So you got to be thinking about all the, okay, I got to do my butt muscle. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to, you know, engage this and that and the other. And so there's no time to think about, you know, yeah. oh, I, I hate doing that. There's no time. Yeah. Your mind yeah. is quiet and you're, you're just focused on what that's you're true. doing and what you're saying. So that's a really good thing. So anyway, I'll shut up now. Lots of, <laughs> Thank lots you. of love to you, Alice. Wonderful to connect with you. <laughs> and Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Welcome. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, I got a kick out of what she said and I could relate to some of it <laughs> for sure I've always hated exercising except a long time ago when I did jazzercise for a while I really I had fun with that but even that I didn't stick with it and um and so I I you know attended your little free sessions one time and I thought I think this is something I would like and I am so glad that I did that because um, when I filled out my chart, okay, pain of not exercising, I, you know, disappointment in myself, a little stiffness, a little feeling of failure and aging. Those, those are the things I put there. And then the pleasure of exercising. Now I'm with her. Like there are times when you say things like, oh, how it feels so good to exercise. And I'm trying to do all the different things we're supposed to do. You know, my shoulders back and my head like it's the string is holding it up. And uh oh, my pelvis is tilted the wrong way. And I'm busy trying to do all of that. I feel so tense and hard. And I'm thinking, I don't feel good doing this. <laughs> so, but it makes me chuckle because I'm thinking, well, you know, on down the road. I think, you know, I'll get that on down the road, but it, it's not yet for me. I, I haven't been with you a year yet, maybe a little more than half a year, but on the pleasure side, I, even in this little bit of time, a half a year, I have little bits of achievement and I feel so good when, you know, I achieve some little thing. And I'm not saying I achieve perfection on anything, you know, but I, I know I'm doing something better. And and it just, it makes me feel good. And the other thing is I look forward to improving. I know it's going to happen. I've seen little bits of it already. And so that gives me joy. Um, and I feel good about it. the healthy habit. Oh, those little, oh, the accomplishments. Every now and then, someone else or I will recognize a little accomplishment, um, a little stronger. I mentioned in class the other day, breaking down cardboard boxes when I help with our uh, food pantry. 
and I can do it. <laughs> and uh, the connection that we have when we do the sessions with you and your helpers, that's part of it. That's part of the joy too. Uh, and then you mentioned one that I hadn't even thought of, but everyone in my family has that has passed away has passed away because of cancer. And um, so I wrote down cancer fighting, yay. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, at this stage of the game, it doesn't all feel good when I'm doing it, but I have more in the positive side than I have on the negative side. And I'm very thankful. <laughs> So you bring up a really good point is that is, um, so like when you do one session, you're not going to like make this drastic, um, transformation, right. And from one week to the next, and it, and it's kind of, it's really difficult some, in some ways to measure progress when you're making some progress every week, because like in week eight, nine, you're not, it's difficult to compare to week two, three. You know what I mean? It's easier to compare week nine to eight because that like week two was, you know, six, seven weeks ago. So I think one thing that you said that really stood out for me was celebrating the, the, all the little wins and really making the little wins huge. So I think what everybody should take away from this all and what you shared is celebrating the little wins and, um, Patricia, who's the psychologist, um, that we had on the show he's like he's like a world-renowned psychologist um bj fogg thank you so bj fogg who's a psychologist uh, and professor at stanford he wrote a book called T tiny habits and his whole philosophy about improving and, and improving behavioral patterns is celebrating all your little wins and starting with little habits and building them up over time so every time you do a session one thing that can really help is giving yourself a emotional or sometimes even physical like pat on the back that hey I did a great job I improved today I took care of my health and I made I'm making myself stronger healthier more energetic more alive and more thriving in life you know and, and to to have that celebration after each action I think is really really profoundly effective and it gets literally ingrained in your neuro associative patterning for your thoughts about exercise. So I I love what you said and I would kind of couple it with what I shared there as well. Lots of love to you, Jerry. And I love your beautiful Christmas tree that's behind you. <laughs> and Rivka, hello and welcome to you. Yeah, so I can relate so well to what Alice and Jerry were both talking about and not wanting to go into the exercise today and glad that you're doing measurements and I'm not going to be doing it today and all of that. And yet um, it's at the end of a session, it's clearly I'm a, more alive and vibrant and love going into the Q and A's where I get to join other people that are also going through all of this. And I'm really valuing this right now, Ravi, because of the sharings and honesties that are going on um, in everyone. So I, I'll just pinpoint something that came up in me a couple of months ago was an emotional crisis. And it was over the Turkish get up exercise. Um, I touched into deep failure and that made me wonder if my brain is working correctly, the, the mental and the, the right and left side brain seem to be out of sync. Um, it was very, it was a very deep emotional experience. So I would say that that I, that was interesting to come to an emotional crisis through doing the exercise through failing in the exercise having gone through that my relationship to the turkish get up became a little different um it 
it, I began to use interoception rather than um, past habit of feeling and thinking. I could see as you we were going through the exercise today, the pain of exercising brought up the, the memory of the Turkish get up, but it was my brother always succeeding. He was almost seven years older than me, always succeeding physically. He, he swam, he was on the swim team. He was many different things. He skied, helicopter skiing down the slopes, all the uh, things that he was always in my face about how good he was and how lacking I was. And this has been a really other very important emotional growth for me. And it's very slow during, I'm just over a year, I'm into the beginning of a second year of VIP. And stopping the comparisons of me with others, um, especially me with my brother, that's the past. And when, when I get into the exercising and like others have already shared, you're in the present moment. There isn't space to think about comparison if you're really there, if you're really in present time. I find that the interoception, the sensitivity of how it feels to be doing the movement, how it's almost like a game. Can I remember to breathe? Can I remember um, intra-abdominal pressure while expanding into thoracic alignment? Just the, the almost the game and fun of watching myself growing in that capacity to bring those things into a happening in present time without having to think about it and all the pieces the emotional uh, moment i had with turkish get up is that nothing was fitting together it was all fragmented and the feeling i'll never get it all together so the slowing down has been part of my learning experience it's slowing down doing less recognizing the state i'm in today and just going into the interoception of how all this feels as it's beginning to happen more and more together not whether i achieve the exercise that's taken me a year to give up achieving the exercise and learning to be present with the actual experience i'm having right now so i i just wanted to emphasize that it was great to come into that emotional crisis <laughs> with the exercise and to see to see how it had to do with my brother and my upbringing and it still affects me wanting to compare but it's becoming less and less important and achieving is becoming less and less important thank you that is that is that is uh, that brings up a lot of things <laughs> but thank you that was really powerful um yeah and you know when you've had those emotional events in your life like a brother comparing and saying look how much better basically i am that i can do these things it creates an emotional connection with those thoughts of physical activity and capability and and it can create a negativity and sometimes it drives people to not want to do that because they don't want to feel that emotion so and that's 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 a lot to overcome and i think you are overcoming that and you know i think the most powerful thing too and what you said is when we stop when we stop yearning for a result and when we and we fall in love with the action that gets us there you'll make 10 times the results when we stop yearning for a result and we fall in love with the actions that get us there, we'll we'll get 10 times more results in, in anything in life. And you see that in anybody who's like a true master or artist at anything is they love doing that thing. It's not about you know, money or fame or glory. Or anything. It's just a, they love doing that thing. And, and what you explained in terms of the process of feeling the exercise and seeing the development and connecting with yourself. And I think that this is just so powerful. It's magical, really. Um, and 
it's so important too because that's one of the things that we lose as we age we start to lose our neurological connection with our body it's not just the physical capabilities that can start to decrease it's the actual neuromechanical the neurological system connecting with the mechanical functionality and when we start to create a breakdown there then we stop active being able to activate the physicality of the body and then the physicality of the body decreases so this all is founded upon having a strong connection with what we're feeling and we're doing and there's nothing more important than that so i would encourage you all vips and even all those in our session here that are not vips when you're exercising is to really feel comfortable that's why we have our whole system filter one filter two filter three which is interoception feel what you're doing becoming connection with your body and there's nowhere to go outside of that until you really have that that's all you should do and once you have that then you can start really focusing okay i can really feel i feel what's happening okay now i'm going to start to really focus on mastery of controlling the stability and such of what i'm doing and then lastly, I'm going to add some extra spice from performance, whether more reps or load or this type of thing to heighten the capabilities. And we should never break those three filters. We're going to have so much more results if we never break those, those, you know, and what you talked about is filter one. That's so important. So thank you for your share. I always appreciate the wealth of wisdom that you bring when we chat. Thank you, Robbie. Could you one more time repeat the filters? Yeah. Uh, so filter one, uh, there's kind of a lot to it, but if we could call it interoceptive optimization, that's if we needed to, if I had to use two words, I would call it interoceptive optimization. Okay. So first of all, what is interoception? Interoception is feeling what's happening. I feel how much effort I'm expending. So like for our VIPs, um, for our VIPs who have been with us at least over one cycle, um, for our new VIPs, you're going to be learning this soon. Um, we do something called your optimal physiological dosage, which gets into how much effort are you expending? And a, a lot of new VIPs like, I don't even know. I can't, I don't, I don't have any idea how much effort I'm expending. Well, that would be like a lack of interoception. So you want to understand, here's my max output, here's where I'm at, here's how I feel, here's how I can feel my shoulder in space, I can feel that my pelvis is lying. Like, you know, um, let me, if I talk deeper about it, like a mirror, is a mirror good to exercise with? Yeah, because you can see that you're aligned or not. But really, the, the mirror is only a stepping stone. You want to be able to, like, I have no mirrors in my gym, Okay. And because I don't, I want to feel, I don't want to have that feedback. Like I'll, I tell all of our new VIPs, I have to explain to them the way I teach is actually more powerful than if I was in the room with you. So like for years, Patty trained in our on, we had our in-person training system for years before we had our VIP training system and our trainers would tell her stuff and she would do it during the session then she would basically forget it like literally she spent like years like that and once she started doing the vip training system she actually learned more because she had to start feeling it for herself and stop being just told what to do so like for those who think oh i should have a trainer in person because it's more valuable they're, they're telling me every move it's like yeah there's benefit but what about when they're not with you? Are they telling you how to sit in your car? Are they telling you what to do um, when you're lifting groceries? Are they telling you? No, you need to develop the interoceptive capability of understanding how that should feel. So filter one, I call it a filter because what most people do is they start with performance and exercise. So they're like, how much weight should I lift? How many reps should I do? How much, how far should I go? Those things are important, but it's like the last piece. It's not the first piece. So interoception biomechanically, if you really want to optimize, that's the first piece, is feeling what's happening, feeling the connection with your body. And it's both physical and emotional. It's not just physical. It's not just, do I have my scapula back or forward? It's, do I have my scapula back and how do I feel with the safety and comfort and stability and connection and strength with my body and 
confidence and my physical stability and balance, all those things, that's, that's interoception. So you want to have a really strong foundation there. And if you do, then you're also developing your afferent signaling. You see in motor action, there's sensory signaling and then there's a motor action. So, you know, if I'm going to lift this glass of water, I need a sense that, oh, my arm is down. That's the sensory. And then, okay, I want to raise it two inches. Okay, come back with the motor action. Okay, now I want to bring it to 90 degrees. Okay, so I have to sense I'm at 45. And then I need to go up about here to get to 90. Right, so everything is sensory and then motor. Sensory and then motor. And what happens is, is from emotions, like your brother giving you, well, I'll call it crap about physicality and, you know, giving you what's called head trash and slang terms. Um, you develop emotions around that. And so that becomes part of your motor control system about how your confidence and everything. If you injured your ankle or your shoulder, your knee, your hip, your whatever in the past, those tissues in that occurrence, your body remembers and you develop something called kinesiophobia or fear of motion. All those emotions and all of these things become part of your motor planning, your limbic system, your somatic sensory system of motor action. So when we start training and we really want to develop our body the healthiest way, we need to work through all of that. So that's why we should have positive self-talk when we exercise. We should exhale any negative emotions. We should inhale positive emotions. And all of that is part of filter one. That's what I call interoceptive optimization. And a little side notes that I put in filter one too, is I want to make sure your environment's safe. So if you're doing an exercise, you know, you're thinking about that you're not going to trip over something. You're thinking about where your bands are attached. Safety. Comfort, connection, introception. That's filter one. Filter two is what I call um, biomechanical or proprio, proprioceptive optimization. This is like where your motor action, this is now where your motor action becomes more uh, like your alignment. Are you actually properly aligned? You can't do that until you really have the right feeling first. So you need to tap into the feeling. Now you can develop the motor action to be in good alignment and positioning and start really firing and engaging the right muscles. So that's more of the physical side, okay? So you're getting that. And you're always bringing filter one with you. It's not like filter one shuts off. It's now you graduate, you bring filter one into filter two. So you're still doing filter one. You don't let go of filter one. You bring filter one into filter two, and now it's physicality of alignment and muscle activation. And then filter three is performance. How much load are you lifting? How much range of motion? So for example, lunges. Lunges is something that's very difficult for most individuals. But if you don't have a reasonable lunge, you will become a fall risk. You will. That's why we do lunges. That's one of the big reasons why we do lunges is because if you can't control the stability of stepping out in front of you, that's exactly what creates fall risk for people beyond the age of 50. So, but there's a lot to learn without any range of motion. So, interoception, mechanical optimization, and range of motion doesn't even matter that much yet. You just need to have good alignment. Even I'm not doing a full range. It's okay. Are you doing a proper alignment in the range you're comfortable with? Yes. Okay. Five stars. Awesome. Are you ready to move forward? No, I'm not comfortable. Move forward. Okay. Don't because you're not, you'd be breaking filter one. Oh, I am now comfortable to do more range of motion. Okay, great. So in performance filter three, now more range of motion, more load, more reps, more volume. So you should always follow all your physical training with filter one interoception, filter two, biomechanical, physical alignment, positioning, muscle activation, and filter three is the actual performance. But if we stop and think, everybody in fitness, you take performance and put it first. How much weight, how much, like it may, for me, it makes no sense. 
because most people aren't in, in a position that they really need to be thinking about performance yet. They need to go through these other things to optimize their mechanics. And they, everyone, everyone outside of VIP training system, I would say, would skip these things. And then what happens is they build dysfunction into their emotions and their connection. Most, a lot of people exercise because they don't feel good enough about themselves and stuff. And so then they get negative emotion trapped in with performance. And like some of the most dysfunctional people are the most um, fit, buff, muscular people because they're trying to escape shame and things like that. And, and so that's why they're so focused on performance. So I feel very strongly after watching 30 years of people exercise and helping in the healthiest way possible that this is like, this is the secret sauce to having optimal functionality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Lots of love to you. Okay, I'll keep moving forward. Thank you. Always wonderful conversation with you. We should just make it a Rifka and Robbie uh, show on the next one. And then you ask me questions and we'll we'll go from there. Mercy, hi, welcome. Good hi. to see you. <laughs> Welcome. I never used to, I, thank you. I never used to really be big about exercising and I, I never really did much. I've never been in really great shape in my life, but I've always had an active life. I've done a lot of stuff. I've had a farm and a ranch and done stuff and lifted stuff and thought I was kind of, you know, bulletproof, but it's amazing what a great motivator pain is. <laughs> and the last, you know, like the saying goes, if I thought I'd live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. Right. Um, so I, I've just taken myself for granted. And the last, I'm 66 now. When I hit 65, things started to fall apart. And it was my back and then my wrist arthritis and then my knee and then my foot and then my yachty and my hip. And it, I just seem to be like circling the drain here. And it's been very, it's been terrifying really. And I'm like, I gotta find a way to get my life back here. And so you guys are like this, um like, a life preserver or or whatever um for me and I really appreciate that because so for me now totally different spending the time to exercise that is such a plus that's because in my mind I'm going this is something I can do to get my life back and I you know, I'd be happy to spend the whole stinking day up there in the gym working out <laughs> because it's such a good empowering feeling to feel like there is something I can do and I and the support you guys give is just amazing and you know seeing a way out um you know so I I know I'm gonna have to work for this there's no free lunch there's no magic pill or injection or surgery even that that is gonna make me healthy but the things that you're teaching me about bio you know mechanical optimization learning how to use my body and aligning things right that is the way, but it's not, it's not a free lunch. It's I'm going to have to work at it. And I am down with that because where I was headed was a scary place. So I'm very grateful to you guys. And I, I think about something that you said um, to feel gratitude for the functionality that you do have. And times when I have started to feel sorry for myself, oh, my knee hurts, whatever. I think of that. Feel gratitude for the functionality you do have. This could be so much worse. So thank you for everything. <laughs> Thank you. Very powerful share. Thank you, Mercy. Lots of love to you. April. Hello. Welcome to you. Hi. We're, we'll give you a link there to unmute, April. Okay. So I'm Hello. brand new, right, <laughs> to this. So it's been great hearing everybody's stories and Mercy's was like, it just totally hit home for me because that's my situation is um, foot, knee, hip, uh, and I'm, you know, I can no longer walk as long as I want in nature, which is one of my loves. So I'm highly motivated to um, change that. And it was your, the four days of, of free workshops that when I heard over and over, it's about alignment and how you're moving your body. And that's the most important thing. First, I thought, <clears throat> I have a, like, this is a possibility of changing my life <clears throat> in a big way. So, um, yeah, super grateful for that. Um, but I also wanted to say, even though, again, I, I've been doing this for what, two weeks or something, but uh, three weeks already. 
Um, I, I love the, um, the feeling at the end where, and I don't know if it's just from the deeper breathing or, or it's a combination. It's probably a combination because I know when you're moving your, your, you know, you're moving your synovial fluid and you're, you know, you're pushing your lymph and all kinds of stuff. But I, I end up in this wonderful calm place at the end, which I love. So I love that meditation at the end. Like it's just so perfect for me. I just, cause I just want to stay in that calm, that really nice calm place. So, so that's really nice anyway. So, but I'm really looking forward to, uh, when, especially when I'm hearing these stories that, yeah, this can, it can do like, this can do it. So yeah, to shift that stuff that I really need shifted. Yeah. So thanks. Thank you. Th Thank you for sharing, April. And I would definitely tie this back to some things that were already shared. And that's basically the, you know, how do we measure progress? How do we, how should we measure progress? And like all of my team members, we, every few months, I'll, we'll do like a book study. And our most recent book study that the team has done is something called the gap in the gain. And so the gap in the gain was from one of my entrepreneurial coaches and basically, it's a really amazing um, thought process methodology that basically says that we either live in the gap, which is like, okay, I want to be here. And here is the horizon. So you know that if you start driving your car towards the horizon, the horizon is going to keep moving and it, you're never going to get to the horizon. So and as soon as you make progress, you still have another horizon. So it, you're, there's always this gap, right? That's the gap. That's living in the gap. And most people live in the gap. Um, and, and it's a tricky thing too, especially for achievers, because you kind of have to like want to continue moving forward to have. Um, and so you, you always are looking at that gap. But the way we should measure progress is by looking backwards. And so that's the way you don't measure progress by looking forward. You measure progress by looking backwards. So if we look backwards and we start to see all of the progress that we have made, all of the, and you start counting up all of the little improvements that accumulate to produce huge results over time. Look backwards. Where were you? Where were you before the full body fix? How much more functional, how much more are you doing than you were doing before the full body fix started, for example, right? I would guess significantly more, right? And especially taking on and adapting and even mind and body. Right. So by measuring backwards, I think that's the way you really best see the progress. And then I think we have a lot of gratitude. We know where we want to go. And I think that's why I think it's best to just fall in love with the actions that we know are going to get us there and don't really focus so much on the result, but just have an eye on where we want to get to fall in love with the actions, measure backwards for progress and have a lot of gratitude along the way. And it keeps us happy and moving forward that way. So, yeah, yeah, I just the, I mean, well, even just that lovely feeling of calm and well being, you know, just even that, that's lovely, you know. So, but anyway, I'm looking forward to a whole lot more. And, uh, and actually, what you say about looking backwards is so, um, also true for Tai Chi because you feel like you, you can't, you feel like you're never going to get to where the instructors are because they're so far advanced. Um, but then they remind you what you looked like three months ago and you go, oh yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I don't look like, and I don't feel like I did three months ago. So yeah, yeah it's neat. Yeah. yeah. The lots of pleasure, pleasure of exercising there for sure. <laughs> lots of love to you, April. Thank you for connecting with me. And hello, Terry. Welcome. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I forget why I raised my hand, but hi. I just want to <laughs> say hello again. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, no, when I first uh, jumped on, I literally, my hair is still wet. I jumped out of the swimming pool um, up in Seattle. I swim outside. I think I told you that. So when you were first talking about exercising and all the different comments, I thought maybe part of the barrier is just the word exercise. Because like you say, it's really about moving um you know like authentic movement like for the rest of your life and when we think about when i think about moving my body 
then it's different than that mindset of exercise, the gym, right. hard. Right. It's just a different, I don't know, it's just body and space and whatever. But, oh, and really quickly, that guy who's worked, because I used to do a lot with flow state, it's Chek Mahai. The guy with the yeah. flow state, Miguel Chek Mahai. Yeah. yeah, because we used yeah. to do a lot with the array where you had like the, the arrow out this way, this way, and the four quadrants. And it was like flow state was when you hit that balance and skill, that challenge and skill that in the middle where time is, you don't think about time, you're just there, you know, whatever. And I remember it was really helpful for education and just learning adults and kids thinking about when it's too high of a challenge, you know, and too low of a skill, like you boredom, apathy, flow state, whatever, just the different emotional states from like, you know how we get anxious if it's, our skill is low and it's too high challenge. Right. We shut down. And so yeah. it just had a lot of, it made me think about it. So thank you for sharing that. Cause I can tell you do a lot with sort of the mental mindset and prep and all that. And here's what I've experienced in just the week and a half or so. And I was back in New York last week. So I, I have now FOMA, fear of missing out. I've lost track a little bit, but I've already noticed how much it transfers to other things. Like just that little extra the V in my, my back, you know, that just that I always see V's, you know, and just thinking like where that point is and getting just a little more reach in the pool or just like that little bit of alignment. So subtle, you know, I'll sit and go, oops, just woof. And, you know, for me, if it's, if I'm too much in my head, then it's, it's like, you know, we get anxious. So we're not anxious, but, um, Oh, what was my point? Um, when we overthink it, you know, like it's not, oh, this, it's not automatic yet. It's not an automaticity, right? Because we're still in that learning. It takes some time until it's more automatic. So if you just do a lot of stuff, I just take what I can from it and just make it adapt. But I've noticed a lot of things. I was transferring my nephew with CP up the stairs and positioning, and I was doing deadlifts just with a body. You know, I wasn't like on the ball or on the, you know, the tape uh, door pulling stuff, but really just in a couple of weeks. I've noticed a lot of little things shift. So I appreciate that. I think you're brilliant at breaking it down. And I think you give us a lot of entry points, you know, like there's a lot of safe places to pop in and find our way. And then just, and you're always really good about anchoring us in our bodies, like listen to your body. So I, I appreciate all those messages. And I, happy post birthday to Patricia. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that when she shared her vulnerability about 41 i want to go girlfriend i wish i could just give you <laughs> you look beautiful just go for it breathe yes. it's beautiful yeah just go for it you're just great so um happy mahalo and thank you guys and appreciate it appreciate your message terry thank you lots of love to you <laughs> Um, Kate, hello. Welcome to you. Wonderful to see you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I confess I, I don't always love doing it either. <laughs> but um but and it's interesting about the word exercise. I think that's probably true. Um, because before I just walked, you know, I'd walk, do a little running. But um one thing for me in this is I'm not really good at finishing things and I have to, you know, keep going because, well, because I, <laughs> partly because I paid for it. <laughs> I paid, honestly, I paid a lot of money, so, you know, I have to do it. But um, also, yeah, I, I just, I see, I see a lot of really fit older people in, I live in Vermont and they're all people running and doing the, um, the roller skiing thing or whatever it is. And, uh, running and and I know people who are a few years older than me and they're just in bad shape you know? and 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 I just refuse to go I can't be like that so that's that's what started me doing this but yeah it's not easy I, I feel like in the morning I'm kind of running trying to keep up sometimes and um but Um, but it's, it's good. It's good. I'm, you know, I may not, well, I may not always love it, but I feel better that I'm doing it. So 
I want to tie in what you're saying along with what Terry's saying, which I, I was wanted to comment on something that you said too, Terry. And that is, so it is true. So here's what the actual research on physical activity and Terry had a great point. Like, well, maybe it's like, cause of exercise people kind of connect with like this, like, how do they think about exercise? Right. Um, like the word diet, for example, people think, oh, diet. Oh my gosh. Like it's so bad. Right. But like the word diet actually means the foods and drinks that an organism consumes on a regular basis. That's all it means. It's just been popularized by, by actual diets that we know in our modern day, which is restricted can, um, structures of, you know, eating this way or that way. So, and people probably think of exercise the same way. Um, when I do think of exercise, it's really being physically active in a way that you really enjoy. Um, but as we age, there are certain functional mechanical characteristics of the body that we kind of need to nurture the way that we do in the VIP training system. So it's really important that you optimize your mechanics in a way that stay functional. But outside of that, it's just living a healthy, happy, vibrant life that includes moving, dancing, riding a bike or not, or walking or doing absolutely anything that includes physical activity. Um, some interesting things about physical activity and like sitting and how active we should be is they've actually done a lot of research on, you know, people who exercise and structured exercise versus just stay really physically active. And those who are really physically active who who get up often and kind of live an active daily lifestyle actually have the greatest health benefits so it's more it's more about living an active vibrant healthy life than it is about doing structured exercise the one caveat i would put on that is as you age second half of life you do start to lose some functional mechanical characteristics of the body if if you don't take care of them. So that's why like in our VIP training system, it's all about optimizing mechanics. But then I encourage VIPs to go out the rest of the day and do whatever and everything that makes you happy, that you enjoy, that's functional. And there's no there's no right or wrong. And to take all of the, the neuromechanical training that you've gained and take it with you into all the other activities that just makes that activity that much better. So for example, um, you know, Terry has a disabled family member and she's working with them on a daily basis. And now she's applying the mechanical optimization into that, which is making her life better there. And that's what I really encourage everybody to do is learn the optimal mechanics and then take that into all areas of life. And that way you can live the happiest, healthy, most vibrant life possible. Yeah, I, I think I'll have to remember that. I have to work on to, to, you know, not just make it like, make it, you know, an hour a day, but make it kind of a, ex, extend it and integrate yeah. it, integrate yeah. it in a day. So. And, and like, it can be so simple. It can be as simple as like, when you, when you want to, you get up when you're watching a show and you just start marching in place for like, we go to get a drink of water and you kind of march in place to do it. And, you know, like I'll go in Patty's office and she's watching her shows that she likes to watch. And she's behind, she's, she's doing this in her office alone because she knows how beneficial just movement is. So it doesn't have to be so strong. And you can get like crazily fit, actually living a life like that. You don't, it doesn't have to be like really specific. And, but I would encourage everyone to look backwards to measure progress. Where did you come from? If like you're a VIP and now you're doing a lot more exercise, you're doing great. You don't need to like start adding all this other stuff yet. Wait till you feel comfortable to do that. And then once you feel comfortable, then you can start letting it make the rest of your day a little bit more active and that type of thing. So what I would encourage everyone to do is always stay where you're moving towards side of the mental dialogue can stay nice and healthy and and connected with so it doesn't become a burden right exercise should not become a burden it should be something you really connect with so i think it's always important to match the emotional with that yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you. Lots, lots of love to you, Kate. Thank you so much for what you shared with me. Appreciate you being here with us and appreciate you being in the VIP family. It's wonderful to have you with us. Um, Al, hello, sir. Um, De Deb, it's not, you have Al on your screen, but I know it's you, Deb. Hello and welcome. It's me. <laughs> My other half, hat, my other VIP teammate had to leave, darn. Yeah. <laughs> so he's left me here alone. Okay, um, yeah, I have been with you for like, well, it's a little over two years now, or maybe two years in June. When I first started, I mean, I've always been very active, come from an extremely active physically family. Um, I can't remember a day where I haven't been doing something, but um uh, the first three months, I was like, okay, where are the changes? Okay, where are they? I'm looking and quote from you, patience, grasshopper. <laughs> Tell me patience, you know, it will come. And it did microscopically at first, but I learned to take baby steps. And then as I kept going with it, um, I just started noticing bigger things, things that I really just hit me in the face and family saw me doing. And um, and then it was about a year into it. All of a sudden, I just hit this wall where I just kind of went on autopilot. Okay, we're exercising. Okay, yeah, okay. And I talked with you and he gave me these flow skills that, I mean, I religiously look at those every day and I have passed them on to Al because I'm kind of his coach. And um, that really did a lot. And of course I do a ton of yoga, ton of meditation. And so it really kind of connected. Then I read a couple of those really wonderful books about mindful mindfulness. And, um, and I, uh, so now exercise is ju it's just a way of life. It's just ingrained. And um, I really can do that whole hour. And when it's over, it's like, I feel like we've only done five minutes. I, I've totally I'm immersed in it that I haven't heard anything around me except you <laughs> in your voice. So, but I mean, my my favorite story is that it has impacted my everything, all my daily life activities. I noticed that there's a few things and we are raking leaves. And I mean, your your voice is in my head. <laughs> so I, you know, get get yourself straightened up. Watch where you're leaning. Don't slump. Do the and I tell you, we raked about 35 bags of leaves and it was felt great. It was, it was wonderful. And um, even my teenage grandchildren, we, we play a family football game at Thanksgiving and, and I always would sit out. Well, this time I went out there and I threw the best forward pass I've ever. And it took a while for them all to get their jaws back up because it's like, oh my God. <laughs> what you do but no this whole program was great it's it's an exercise program that i um that i never knew it really existed and i like it i understand it and i'm i'm moving forward and i'm looking forward to another you know 30 30 years or more <laughs> but thank you that i just thank you thank you patricia Growing old is great. It's all in your mind. <laughs> yes. Yes. As my friend Joe Weldon says, you're not getting older, you're getting better. You you can think, you know, I mean, you are getting physically older. No doubt. You can't control that. Chronologically. It's it's how you think. It's how you accept things. And being positive is is a is a really great thing. It is. Just want to thank you guys again and again. <laughs> well, big warm hug, virtual hug to you, Deb. And thank you so much for what you shared. It's very, it's very empowering. Super. Yeah. There's, re there's really not words actually, um, 
you know, this is, this is life. This is the one we got. And by you having the right mental, emotional, and physical wherewithal, it makes it a million times better. So thank you for connecting with us and being in the VIP family. You're, you're, you're a really important part of us. Lots of love to you. <laughs> Maureen, hello and welcome. Hi. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for this program. So the, I've been in it about six months. And before I even took this program, I exercise every day. I love to exercise. So I got a nice long list of how awesome it is. Yeah, that that I don't have any trouble with. So um, what I am struggling with now is that uh, my knee is hurting me. So uh, my shoulder also hurts, but my shoulder is better, which is really exciting. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better in the last six months. That's that's worked. And you, you promised that during your uh, pre- workshop <laughs> the shoulder would get better okay so that check it's better um but my knee is actually worse i know i have arthritis in it so how do i balance the fact that you know i'm really excited about exercise but my knee hurts and actually i think the reason why my knee is hurting now is from the lunges that we do <laughs> um that it's it's just hard on my knee and I think it's made it worse. I don't know for sure if it's gonna get better. Um, so instead of, uh, so this is, I'm in phase two now. So instead of going all the way down and coming all the way back up. So first I was doing that and then I suddenly noticed, uh oh, my knee is not doing well. So now I'm just standing up and doing little, um, you know, just going down a little and coming back up. So now I have this fearful thing about my knee I wish I, I feel like, well, I wish I could exercise more, but now I'm worried that my knee is gonna get worse if I do that. And so I don't know how to kind of balance that. I've also been told on the other hand, if you don't exercise the knee that has arthritis, that's even worse. So what, yeah. what do I do about those two things that are seemingly in conflict? And I know other people in the program have parts that are hurting because they mention it, you know, during the shares, you know, this hurts, that everybody's got something. So how, how, how does that work in your head? And then how much exercise can I do without making my knee worse? And how is my knee, here's a big question, by doing this phase two, is my knee not gonna heal now because the program is too hard on it? I have that fear too. So, so yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you're, I would say the first thing you're breaking the rules. <laughs> so you're breaking the rules and you're suffering the consequences. So, um, so filter one is interoception and you felt discomfort, but yet you chose to do more performance, which is range of motion. So you're breaking filter one, breaking filter two, arriving at performance. And so what I'm going to tell you is go back to filter one. You'd be better off doing a lunge with partial range of motion and or decreased load which there's ways if you're not familiar with how we decrease load in the lunge, then you should connect with our fitness doctor experts and they'll show you specifically how to do that. But you're doing too much range, too much load for you currently. You potentially also, if you, depending on the range of motion you're using before, if all of a sudden you start increasing range of motion significantly, that's not, um, that's, we should only improve our performance by about 10% per week. And you shouldn't keep doing 10% per week either. So like if you're lifting 10 pounds, the most weight you would lift the next week in the same exercise with the same exact reps would be 11, for example, right? So, or if you're doing 10 reps, the most amount of reps you would increase in with the same weight would be 11 reps, right? So range of motion works the same way. If you're doing 50 degrees, the most amount of range of motion you would increase the following week would be like 55 degrees. And it's all, and you would never stay doing that week after week after week, depending on your fitness level, you would decrease every two to four weeks. You would go back a few steps and then start going forward again. So um, so it's just, I would tell you that it sounds like you're using improper progressional protocols. And I would want you to regress, go back and use that protocol, relying more on your experts. And then also from this conversation, you know, I'm going to make sure Dylan connects with you as our clinical director. So connect with you, see specifically what's going on and make some adjustments for you as well. So 
those are the two answers for you is one you're breaking you're breaking my rules for training and you're suffering the consequences so we got to go back to interoception first you're right, better so off. i already i already backed off i already did Good. that so yeah. and also the knee didn't hurt until after the class so while i was doing it it didn't bother me it was after the class was over so i didn't know there was a problem until it was too late <laughs> But then, yeah, now I've already backed off. That's that's Good. done, but yeah. the knee's still hurting me. So yes. that's that's what I really wanted to ask about is it's not it's not healed yet. So that's what I don't know what to do about. So you you say just talk to Dylan. Yeah, well, Dylan will definitely help you. He's my clinical director. He's the one that would is watching you in every session and would also yeah, yeah he's he's definitely there. But anyway, yeah. this this program has been awesome for me. It's it's perfect. It's what I needed. I knew every day when I went to the gym, I pretty much did the same stuff and I did some stretching and I didn't address the total body. So this has made a whole, I can tell just when I'm walking around, my whole body is filled with muscles. <laughs> so it woke up, you know, so some muscles were awake because I was doing the gym every day, but then some muscles were, were not. And now everything is alive. So I feel alive and that I really thank you for that. It is awesome. You're very welcome. That's and, awesome. And the whole the whole team, all of our uh, support staff, they're they're excellent too. So I wanted to give a shout out to them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, and just for just for the future, just knowing that the knee can get inflamed easier with arthritis, so missing cartilage, it's easier to create friction there. So you just I would just really encourage you at any moment to any time you're gonna be um exposed to increased range of motion to baby step and like never past, you know, a few degrees increase at a time, see how you feel and back off from there instead of going too far. That's, that's going to help you tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like that's a wrap. I had Renee here who we're going to connect with, but it looks like maybe she needed to leave. Um, anything else anyone would like to share before we close out this amazing session? Patricia, anything that you would like to share? So Maureen, I'm going to share with you um, about my knee. My knee can be weird also. And as you know, I'm not an exercise specialist. So if I'm not paying attention to my knee, I, I really need to focus on my knee because my knee has a life of its own and likes to do some looking like like his um crossed eye my knee loves to do that so i pay 10 times more attention because if i am not paying attention and i do phase two sessions and we do a lot of things with our knees and if i don't pay attention if i'm just oh okay i have one hour to train i'm going to train because this is what I'm supposed to be doing now. And I'm going to be thinking about what I need to do next. Oh, I need to work. Oh, I need to respond to this. If I go in this mode, not paying attention, I hurt my knee because my knee is just interesting this way. So things that hurt us just require a lot of attention. It's in, in me, for me, it's my knee and my neck that I constantly need to be thinking about it, constantly. Even going up and down the stairs in my house, I pay attention in my knee because doing something so simple, running up the stairs with my dog, if I'm not paying attention, I hurt my knee. It, it's, it's stupid, it's ridiculous, but it does happen. So I would... Not being an exercise expert, like most of us here, we're not exercise experts. We're not our body experts per se. For, for Robbie and for our team, this is much easier because they, they are so connected with the body. I'm very connected with the computer. If whatever happens in my computer environment, I notice really quickly. But with my body, it requires 
a lot of attention. So th that that yeah, would look be at, my... look at me trying to share the slides today. <laughs> That's the same thing in reverse, right? So you're, you're making a really good point, Patricia, actually. And so it's not just range of motion. It's like the alignment of your knee and or any body part, if this relates to everybody. If you have an area of your body that's more likely to have an issue, you have to pay attention. That's the filter one, introception, feeling how am I aligned? You know, if you're not, if you're doing a deep lunge, you're not really your pelvic alignment, your knee alignment, your foot, your positioning, exactly the tissues that are working, and you have a lot of cartilage breakdown, and you're doing more range of motion, you're going to create a friction in there that can create inflammation that then causes, you know, negative sensations afterward. So it's really important for you to be keen sense of awareness on your positioning in all of your motions, especially the motions that involve areas that may have been troublesome or you know are troublesome for your body. And I believe that also knowing that you have something, you, you know, right? For me, it's my knee and it's my neck. These are the things that if I am not paying attention, I can injure myself doing simple things. So knowing that you have that if i am i usually work out at 11 or noon and i am a computer worker so i spend a lot of time sitting and i wake up early so i start with um working around 5 30 a.m 6 a.m and i'm going to work out five six hours after that a lot of sitting i have done if i don't stretch properly and do my mobility solutions before I start training so when it's lower I make sure that I do the rolling on my legs because this is something that really helps me I make sure that I do the nerve flossing that super helps me every time before I train that significantly reduces my chances of getting hurt and with my neck is the same thing I use the gun I do the ball I have a lot of things here and probably taught me the ball here that oh my gosh this was a life changer for me and I do it every time before and I do after before it's supposed to be not a full stretching right it's supposed to be faster and after we do much more thorough so this is not I went through phase one three times okay so I am not a fast learner it takes me a while to really connect with my body. It's difficult. It's not easy, right? It's 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 patterns that we have to undevelop, to redevelop correctly. And what what is correct feels wrong. So it those little things really makes a total difference in my life. And if I am, I learn that if my knee is being bothered i just stop i don't do it you know if i, I if my knee start hurting with a simple squat i stop what i'm doing i get my roller and i stretch and i i do my thing and then i try again and if again i feel that is hurting i don't push through it anymore before i used to push through it because i was all uh, on my pain of not exercising I will get in that column I will get in the, oh I'm you're gonna get out of shape you start talking to yourself right you're gonna you're gonna get out of shape you're gonna get fat those are my mental dialogues you're you you're being lazy oh you're, you're just coming up with an excuse not to do this and I would just do it and I would get hurt and I would spend two weeks not working out because my stupid mental dialogue push me through it to do it now it's like okay you're hurting let me baby you so I baby my knee I baby my neck if they feel good and okay I continue if they don't I just lay down my mat and I do my nerve flossing and I use my roller and everything goes well so I would I have the blessing of having Robbie in my life every day right so this is really good because he taught me a lot on don't push through in performance and it's really interesting how 
lots of people are connected on that. We were in um, a hotel this week and this lady comes to talk to us. Oh, you guys are so fit. You probably work out a lot. I just started going to the gym a week ago and I am doing how many pounds she was doing? And she was, she was, uh, she's squatting like 95 pounds and she was probably about 55 years old. She probably, she probably weighed like 120 pounds soaking wet. Yeah. So yeah. she's light. In other words, she's thin and she just started working out and she's back bar squatting, which I, oh yeah. After years of doing like competitive training, Unless, unless you're going to be like playing in the NFL, these type of like, you don't, you don't need to put a bar on your back and do squat. It just, uh, there's, there's more risk than there is benefit, honestly. So yeah, yeah, she, she was doing, yeah, she was, she was doing like 95 pound barbell on her back, which is almost her body weight. And I'm like, well, first of all, <laughs> what are you doing yeah you just started you, yeah. you are squatting more than i am and i've been working out my whole entire life it's it and, and, and her shoulder was hurt and throughout this conversation because we have a lot of conversations like this with people it's like what is your goal yeah. Are you feeling that be because you chose not to work out, you chose not to take care of your health, now that you're choosing to do those things, you're going to achieve all of these years that you've been inactive in two weeks? Is, is that the goal? Because that's an unrealistic goal. It's the same as you have... $10 in your bank account, you just start working and you're going to have a million in the end of a month. It, it, it's, it's the same, right? Nonsense that people think. So for everybody, just do what you're comfortable. It, it's, it's an interesting uh, mindset, doing what you're comfortable. Because for all of us that like to achieve, being comfortable equals you're being lazy, right? It can, it can trigger some thoughts like this. Oh, I'm too comfortable. No, but this, this, is, this is the thing to do. This is what works and this is what keeps you in the because, game. Because, because your intensity, as I always say, your intensity is on your consistency. The only place intensity belongs is on your consistency. So if you're intense about staying consistent, it's okay that you do what Patricia's saying. It's okay, like, oh, my knee here, I'm not gonna do any more squats or lunges today. I'll do the other things in the session, but I'm, I'm, I'm cutting those out for today. I'm gonna nurse myself um, when they, Robbie's doing those exercises in the session. I'm gonna roll because I'm a great VIP. I know where my mobility restrictions are and I'm going to do the exercise for those areas that are probably pulling my knee out of alignment, for example. Great. Now you're aligning, not as biomechanical optimization. Now you can come back without issues in the next session. And now your knee probably doesn't hurt you as much. Now you're able to do maybe a limited range of motion and you always stay moving forward this way because you're intense about your consistency. That's how you make massive improvements in the second half of life with fitness and how you stay away from constantly getting into like the, the gutter of like breakdown and issues is you just, you don't let yourself go there. And then, well, like, it's not after, even in the second half of life, is in any time of that's life. That's true. No, that's true. Right? It's 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 true, but especially like, it, it's true. But at eighteen, you do recover faster than when you're seventy-eight. You know, so yeah. But and so you know what what you would have recovered from in three days when you're eighteen now it takes you know three months, right? So so you you can't get away with it. Like the insurance policy doesn't work as fast. So it's better to not go there. You know, and so to not go there, you just, you train the way that Patricia's saying. And because you're intense about your consistency, you have so much volume over, if you look at each month of training, you have so much volume of fitness activity that you're a very fit, functional individual that doesn't have issues because you don't, you don't go there. And then as a VIP, if you're in our VIP family, you have all these elite experts, you just connect with them. Hey, I was having trouble with this. You want to give me some extra help? Of course, absolutely. What, what you know, they'll meet with you to do whatever to help you solve and optimize those things, give you prescriptions and everything. So, 
th that that is what you should do as a VIP. Yeah. And probably Miss Kate has her hand. Yes, <laughs> let's bring her up with us here. Hello, hello, Kate. Hi. Yes, I just Hi. have three more little things to say. Sure. One is, um, and and I say this humorously. The only time I feel old is when I look at those videos on WhatsApp. <laughs> that again? Say that again. I said the, I, I said I, I say this with humor. The only time I feel old, and um, I'm not old. I'm almost seventy-two, but I'm not old. Is when I look at the videos um, that get sent on WhatsApp. <laughs> the only time I feel old. Um, and just for everybody to know, like as a VIP. Every single session you get recorded and analyzed and you get f digital feedback on your body mechanics, your alignment, what you should do to improve. And so she's saying when she sees her herself, I just wanted to create clarity. They're helpful, but I, but I think, oh, God, look at you, look at the old. <laughs> and um, I just want to say that was a very nice picture of you and Patricia. Um, I also really like the picture of your dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was like pictures of dogs. Thank we you. do too. Yeah. I have Thank about you. a million of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. I, I have a phone like that. Yeah. I am so. their favorite paparazzi. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and one, when I get the camera, he amazingly poses for me. He smiles, oh. he sits, he looks absolutely amazing. The other one purposely does exactly the opposite what she was doing so it's almost impossible to get a, a cute picture of her because at the moment i get the picture she does something that is <laughs> not supposed to <laughs> yeah yeah some of them love it and yeah some yeah. of them it's it's true you just you just cannot get a picture i know <laughs> they do what they want to do yeah. <laughs> okay Okay, so that is a wrap. It's been absolutely wonderful connecting with all of you. This has been a great session, um, great connections, shares, and hopefully each and every individual in this session has gained something from our time together. Uh, enjoyment, connection, thoughts about your fitness and taking care of your, your mental, emotional, physical, and in a way, even spiritual well-being. Uh, through living the very best life possible. And I think it's amazing when we come together here and share these things because we're we're sharing in a collective energy to help everyone, um, everyone. And, and I think that's what life is really about is providing value to others and living a better life because of the way that we uh, don't just care about ourselves, but we care about others and bring the very best to others that we possibly can. I wish all of you to have a very wonderful Merry Christmas and also happy holidays for those of you who don't celebrate Christmas. So Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And we will see you again very soon. And the next episode that we're going to talk about is going to be osteoporosis and osteopenia because we have been having a whole lot of mis misconception on this subject and we feel that we must solve all these misconceptions so in january you should expect a fabulous osteoporosis and osteopenia osteopenia episode bone density for for all of those for all, whether you have osteopenia, osteoporosis or not, bone density and all the things you do to build your bone density and structural integrity is important. So our next episode will be about that and training and many details about that. It might even be a multi-part series that we do. So lots of love to you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye for now.